On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, we change the oil pressure sender on a 2010 GMC Sierra or a uh, Silverado 1500, whichever one you have, anything with a 5.3. What is going on guys? I'm Watch Chair Go and today we're here with this 2010 GMC Sierra, just like I said, and we've got a new oil pressure sender here. It's the Dorman 926041 engine oil pressure sensor with filter. I'll throw a link in the description below and today we're going to uh, climb back here and change it without taking the intake off because that's the key. Uh, I've done one of these before and we definitely did not have to take the intake off. The dealership though, wants $1,200 for the job and they want to remove the intake. Maybe it's just like secret preventative maintenance. No, that's secret redonkulousness. I, I just assumed that they were like, well, the intake gaskets could have gone bad, so now we're going to change them. No. But uh, it, there's no reason to pull the intake. We're going to do it without it. We're going to show you how right now. All right, now we just have to pop this guy off. Okay, yeah. There you go. So if you're looking to find this sensor, you won't. <laughs> it's in the back of the engine and usually there's a sound baffle back there that's going to completely block it from your ability to see it. So the camera shots in this are gonna be kind of weird. So we're gonna sneak into the engine bay right here and follow the magic pointer. You can kind of see it right back there right at the right very there. back of the intake. Yep, right here. You need a one and one sixteenth inch socket that we had to pick up for that guy and that's gonna have to be a deep socket this is like the sensor socket too isn't it that's nice it's a nice one fancy what's this say do not use while engine is running interesting one three eight swivel swivel one six inch extension and one ratchet this is an overcomplicated explanation of this job it is <laughs> it's not it's not that hard it's just really annoying very awkward job but the great thing is there are so few parts. This is literally all That's you it. need. Yeah. Now comes the fun part of folding yourself into the engine in order to access this. Thing. <laughs> exactly. That's probably why the techs like to remove everything that's on top first, but <clears throat> I happen to fit in most overhead storage bins. So. I really doubt that the dealership techs actually pull the intake. They probably just charge the flag hour rate and do the work. Game's going in. You're gonna have all this fun. If I'm not back in five minutes, <laughs> just wait longer. I did this already, so. All your turn. Yep, yep. Yeah, there's gonna be a couple of harnesses here. Don't break them. Yeah, and this drive the steering column is not something you really need to put a lot of pressure on either. And again, everything here is gonna be done by feel, even though you can see it. The beauty is, you don't actually have to disconnect any of those hoses. Oh yeah. If you've got skinny arms anyway. And then the flashlight falls down. Right. <laughs> so. Call me the Oracle. Why? I, I'm not ordering red pills or blue pills here, man. I'm just <laughs> dropping flashlights. I'm just dropping flashlights. That's all. Okay. Nice. Got that clip off. That one actually came off pretty easily. The harness is off now already. The fuel pressure sender is back there now. It's been disconnected. Again, difficult to see. You can see it, but everything here has got to be done by feel. So you just kind of wiggle your. Uh... Yeah, I'm actually not even going to attach it right now. I'm going to wiggle this back there. So you can get the swivel and the socket onto the That's right. sender. I was amazed at the commentaries and efforts that everyone else went through. Oh my goodness, man, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Just get the right deep socket and a swivel. Yeah. And then work for a little uh, bit. So you can see that six inch. Yep, all the way on. And it's already connected. Yep. Got it? Yep. Nice. So just a little bit of pressure there. There it is remove the extension or everything so I can just undo the socket by hand. And the only thing you gotta be careful of is... That you don't drop it. Yeah, because it, there's plenty of stuff for it to get caught up on, but... Oh. And there we are. Sweet. There is our old one. Yep. Very dead. Very dead. So there's a screen, a filter bottom of this or right below it that needs to come out and for this you just need a little pick this is a little tool right there you'll place it into the orifice that you have there and then just grasp the side below the teeth and you'll feel it pull and tug and then just lift up 
Yeah, buddy. As soon as you do that, that filter is going to come out. So we're going to get that now. And here we are. Nice. Where's the hole at? <laughs> yeah, this is where <laughs> Destroy. This is where it went in and, and awesome. grabbed. Yeah, yeah, but of course. Sweet. So there's a little bit of junk in there. All right, let's get this new one in. Nice. We have the orifice. We're gonna take the filter and place it back in, tapping it into that orifice. The problem is, it's not gonna seat. So you take that same pick with this, lightly go down those ridges that are the threads until you feel the plastic and give it just a slight little push. It'll seat and you'll feel it. So we're gonna do that now. Basically don't destroy the new filter. Yeah. Because if it slips in there, you're done. <laughs> you're done. And that's in. Now we grab the new part. Hand tighten that on there. Remember reverse thread first so you feel that little click. Then you can go on and start cinching it down. Okay, that's in. And where is the socket here? For this one, I'll go ahead and reattach it. Cops are coming. You're in trouble again. Mm -hmm. Well, we already took the big truck back, so. Dude, I already told you. I'm I got papered, okay? <laughs> Alright, so now we've got that on there hand tight. We are going to go ahead and just find that, place it back on there. It's located. Nice. You see your extension sticking out there. Where is that ratchet? Yeah. And it's in. So connector, lock in connector, and it's done. Pretty much. I leave the socket behind. Yeah, no sockets left behind. <laughs> That's on. Sweet. And now, where's the old parts? There's our old parts. Toss them in the box. Get rid of all that. Oh, thanks, Kelly. Where'd you get her? We believe in ourselves, and we're not going to test it. Test the plastic? No, test the oil pressure sender. Oh. Same way I always do it. Put everything back, and then find out I was wrong. Like Go, it's American, it. so you can punch it and stuff. All right, we're done working on your little truck, Kelly. Good luck with that. I don't know why you it's have to whack it. it. But it's right back where it was. <laughs> Kelly believes in fixing oh, things with a hammer. Now. Basically a Jeremy Clarkson move. That's what you're going for. There you go. The biggest hammer you can find. American version of Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> Drive you slowly. You did this in like 30 minutes. It's not a big deal. No, no. it's less than that. Yeah. Kelly it was like, put it in four high and floor it. It's no race truck, but it'll scratch all four times. <laughs> It's like, oh no. Oh, almost 40. Well, I mean, it's right where it should be. All right, Gabe, you excited to drive a 2010 GMC Sierra? Woo! <laughs> feel it. I can feel yeah, I gotta get limbered up here. I can feel this oil pressure coursing through my veins. I feel it. That and liquid ice. Well, we definitely got this fixed, so I don't know if there's anything else we have to do here. No. Just kind of drive it around, make sure there's no leak. Truck works perfectly. Uh, if you want to know the torque spec to tighten down the oil pressure sensor, it's 26 foot pounds. And I'm not going to say pound feet of torque because every mechanic in the world for the last hundred years has said foot pounds. But for some reason in the comments, people are like, pound feet of torque. The, the OEM manual says foot pounds. What? Why would we pound feet of torque? <laughs> I'm never going to do it. Nobody wants to pound a feet. Josh sold the Falcon. We're going to go help him deliver that. And it's going to magically become light outside. And while we're working on the little truck, we're going to get this big truck out of here. It's uh, going back to Wichita Material Recovery. Thank you so much to them for helping us out with this truck. It was a blast driving it around. We're going to de decal it real fast. People were asking about the decals, and they're like, why did you put your decals on the side? The answer is because I have a vinyl cutter, and I can get this stuff off super fast, and I can also make it really fast. As we pick at it. <laughs> oh, it's coming off really well. I mean. You just, uh, it'd be nice if it was in the sun, then it would really come off nicely. That's true. The other side came off really, easy. really well. There we go. And the monster truck heads back. It's going to be tough to uh, not be driving around in a monster truck. Josh sold the Falcon. So we're going to hop in and deliver it. Nice. Sounds like fun. Uh, Riding back in that monster. I haven't ridden in it since you got the trebles are retuned. Yeah. I'm excited. Should be putting out about 500. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Hey. I started a little rough. I probably should have used the choke a little bit from the beginning. Man, this thing's a champ. It runs so well.
isn't it wild to be driving a car that you can see out of the back window? That's how I feel in my Jeep. I honestly don't know any other cars where you can see out of the back window well, that are modern at least. Hey, you really did. Yeah, uh, I don't think this has ever been up to highway speed before. All the trash coming in through like the floor vents or the dash just attacked me. I couldn't even see. I didn't even know that's what, nothing <laughs> happened to me over here. Oh, I got destroyed. I'm gonna like hop out of this light and try to get all the trash off of me because okay. I'm literally just covered in leaves. in a car and just gotten destroyed by the car. Uh, maybe, maybe dust, but never by like a barrage of leaves and pine needles. All right, we're gonna hop out right now. You've got like okay. 10 seconds. Nah, this light's gonna stay. Oh, wait, this one's a timed one, huh? Yeah, this light stays forever. Wait, oh. wait. There it goes. <laughs> Look at the seat. <laughs> this is uh, Josh's. I don't think it's ever been to highway speeds before. And like, I got up to 70. It just got crushed by like pine needles and leaves in the face. Oh, we gotta pull over just so I can try to clean off. This is, uh, I was so excited to drive this and uh, I've never once been this covered in trash in my life. Look at that. Look at the seat. It's on, look at my foot. <laughs> oh. All right, we pulled the blanket off the seat, got it all cleaned off. Now we can go again. Hopefully I can use my eyes. <laughs> Come on, Falcon. Glasses. Oh, safety glasses would have been key. Or even just sunglasses. I think we got all the trash out of the car. You're welcome, new owner. We are back at Jay Hatfield. Time to pick up the hype wing. There it is. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And please, like, share, subscribe. Do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. This is the infrared test. This is the infrared Surefire, and it's on. I don't see anything. Do you see anything? I don't see anything. <laughs> that is the flashlight that I carried when I was in Afghanistan it's on my rifle and on previous deployments. So It's pretty cool how hot it is with that UV filter on it. Well, that's what it is. It's all heat. Yeah, buddy.